My name's Colby and I'm the Bitcoin miner plug. And today we're gonna be unboxing a new Bitcoin miner. This bad boy right here, which is a Avalon Nano 3 made by Canon, who actually invented the first Bitcoin mining ASIC. And if I get super duper lucky, then I will hit a block and keep an absolutely massive amount of Bitcoin. So lock in and let's go ahead and unbox this Canaan Avalon Nano 3. Let's get to the main event, which is this Nano 3. And would you look, would you look at that? Wow. Been really excited to get my hands on one of these and I'm gonna discuss a few benefits of this machine in particular one of the benefits that really stood out to me is the price point it's got a really interesting price point on these uh, where they are listed for as low as $99 which is a significantly low price point I mean, you can hardly get your hands on a bit axe for that price. And this bit axe right here, I paid about that much for it. And it's currently putting out about 700 giga hash. Whereas this thing right here can actually put out up to four tera hash, which is pretty impressive for a mini desktop miner for at home. So let's open it up. They come in a different range of colors from yellow, pink, blue, which is the one I went with. And wow, would you look at that? Um, <clears throat> uh, white and black. You have to pay a little bit more. I paid a little tiny bit more for the blue edition, but I'm glad I did because I really like the color. And this thing is this thing's a brick, it's not too heavy. And interestingly enough, they claim that this thing will actually put out enough heat for you to notice in a small area. So I'm interested to see if that's very true and how much heat this puppy is actually going to uh, put out here. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I wanna just get straight to the, uh, straight to the hashing uh, because time is time is Bitcoin and uh, this thing could be getting super duper lucky and hitting a block. We'll talk about uh, the mining economics of these mini miners in just a moment here uh, and how you can set it up to different kinds of pools or you can solo mine um, and, uh, and risk it for the biscuit as such. But uh, let's go ahead and see if they sent me the correct PSU for the UK and they did so that's nice um, got me a uh, a little beefy PSU from Canaan and um, some people pronounce it Canon some people pronounce it Canaan whatever um, but this thing's cool and I will not keep you waiting. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this bad boy in right away and see if we can get it to hash in this short little video. All right, so no time wasted. We're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. It connects with a USB-C power connection here to the power supply unit, PSU. And be interesting to see how noisy it is relative to the brains miner or the bit axe. And this PSU can put out 140 watts max on high power mode. All right, let's get down to business.
So there we go, she's fired up. Got a power button here and a switch button here, which does what? It switches the screen content. You can double click it and switch the mining mode from low, medium, and high power, each of which has, of course, a different hash rate that it'll be putting out. And um, what do I gotta do to get this thing hashing? I'm sure there's an IP address that I need to get at. So right, th right now you can see on the screen, uh, it is requesting a connection. So let's get this thing figured out. They provide an app where you can set the nano up, but I'm curious if I can just do it on my computer without downloading an app unnecessarily. It is giving me an IP address right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that IP and see if that gives me admin control over this thing. I see it's already hashing. I assume it's already hashing to their pool, not mine, so that's not great. Okay, so similar to a Bitmain product, the username and password is root, lowercase, and this is how I can connect it to my Wi-Fi. All right, so this thing is now connected. It gave me a new IP address, which I assume was assigned once it connected to the Wi-Fi. So I'm going there and that will allow me to input my pool settings, etc. Um, one thing to point out is I had this thing sitting on the exhaust side. Uh, so rookie move, you don't want to leave it um, either side, either the intake or the exhaust side covered because uh, your miner will become most unhappy. And I can feel that it is actually putting out some heat when it was ramping up and uh, testing because it didn't have an internet connection, but now it does. So we're gonna see how she performs. I do like it though, it's a bit of a brick and relative to the brains miner, which has the metal enclosure, uh, about the same size, a little bit smaller. And um, the brains miner is considerably heavier, a little bit heavier than this thing. Wow. It is set to hash to their pool as is common when you buy a miner. Uh, it will typically just hash to the manufacturer's pool and earn them rewards until you change the settings. So we're gonna go to configuration and switch that up. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot and it'll take those pool settings. No disrespect intended, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right there so that it has room to exhaust heat through the miner. Real time currently putting out two terahash, that is 2000 giga hash, compared to something like this bit ax that would be putting out about 700 giga hash. And what's a giga hash, you might ask? A giga hash is a billion hashes or guesses per second whereas a terahash is a thousand billion or a trillion guesses per second. And these mini miners are gonna be measured in giga hashes or perhaps single terahashes, whereas a industrial scale miner like an S19 or an S21 by Bitmain or a Watts miner, let's say an M30 series or M50 series, these are gonna be measured in over a hundred terahashes per second. This number on the screen is showing real power consumption in watts. This thing can put up, put out up to four terahash, which is pretty impressive. And of course, something that everybody wants to know is how much is a mini miner like the Nano 3 going to cost in terms of power? So this thing is pulling about 100 watts. There's about 730 hours in a month. If you multiply that out, that's about 73 kilowatt hours that this machine is consuming if it's on 24 seven. So if you're paying a really high power rate, like 25 cents per kilowatt hour, then that works out to be like $18 per month. 
Now let's talk about why instead of using a standard Bitcoin mining pool, there's a lot of different mining pools. Instead, I would rather solo mine with a mini miner like this. And why you might ask, because this uses such a tiny amount of power that <clears throat> it really would only stack a very, very tiny, tiny, tiny amount of Bitcoin per day. And that's only like a couple cents worth of Bitcoin per day. Instead, you can lottery mine with this thing. You can roll the dice. This thing has a chance, a albeit extremely unlikely chance of hitting a block solo mining by itself. And what that means is the miner is not promised any returns, but the very, very unlikely chance that if the miner finds a block by itself, then the miner keeps all of the block subsidy and fees from that block. So currently at 3.125 Bitcoin plus fees, that's currently over $300,000 worth of Bitcoin, but let's talk about how likely that is, or rather how extremely unlikely that is. According to solochance.com, a four terahash machine has a one in 206 million chance per block. And we know that blocks are mined on average every 10 minutes. And the difficulty is adjusted by the protocol about every two weeks or 2016 blocks. And that's about 1.43 million chance, one in 1.43 million chance per day. And it would only take me about 4,000 years at current difficulty for this thing to hit a block on average. And we know that difficulty is increasing and therefore it would be thousands and thousands of years before this thing would reasonably be expected to hit a block. So suffice it to say, it's extremely unlikely, but it's still cool as a little tchotchke on the desk and for the odd chance that a mini miner can actually hit a block because it has happened multiple times before and therefore we know it's possible because it's just math these four hashes are competing against an overall uh, network of a, over 700 exahash. So it's competing against an absolute ocean and it's hardly a drop in the ocean in terms of hash power. But in any case, I hope you found the review cool. If you're into learning about Bitcoin from a Bitcoin miners perspective, I am Colby, the Bitcoin miner plug, and I do Bitcoin mining full time. And so I want to share with people what I'm learning in the industry and also fun little videos, you know, doing unboxings for things like this uh, Avalon Nano 3, the Brains Miner, uh, that I will link the Brains Miner review in this video. And I will also be coming up with a, uh, a review for some of the Bidax products as well. So if you're into that kind of content, do not forget to subscribe. Of course, smash that like button if you're into it. Smash the dislike button if you're not into it. Appreciate you coming along for the journey and uh, wish me luck that the Nano 3 hits a block. Peace, love, and Bitcoin. Peace out.